Well, first to Lauren and Jake in class, congratulations on both sharing the same birthday of May 21st. Um, you might remember I polled everyone in class and we had 20 respondents that responded to provide up their birthday or some other day of meaningful interest to them. And so Lauren and Jake, congratulations, you both share the same birthday. Uh, thanks for providing your data for that. I'm going to use the data that was collected for that to talk about just how common is it for a group of people to share the same birthday. So imagine we want to ask the question, do any classmates share the same birthday? Well, we know uh, in our class, uh, in our virtual class in the way of 20 students that Jake and Lauren share the same birthday. Well, we can quantify that with probability. And so let's assume a few things first. The first is that birthdays are independent. And so what might that mean? Well, we might wanna consider that there might not be any twins in the class. If we have twins, they're not necessarily independent births. Uh, they're more clustered, uh, you could think of them as. We might also assume that birthdays are uniformly distributed evenly across the year. As it turns out, birthdays are not uniformly uniformly distributed across the year. You can do some internet searching to find out why. But we can quantify this by asking the probability of two students not sharing the same birthday and quantify that. Well, that we know if there are 365 days in the year, there's a very high likelihood that two people don't share the same birthday or 364 divided by 365, nearly certain that they don't share the birthday. So the solution here is to find out a couple of things. Well, we know if two people share the same birthday, we can quantify that. But what about the probability of three students sharing the same birthday? How about five? How about four? How about 20, like in our virtual class? And so this is one of the cool things about probability is that rather than finding the probability of some event occurring, it's sometimes easier and less work to find the probability of it not occurring. What we call in probability, the complement of an event. And so what is the probability that two students share the same birthday in NR 5021? And so here's the data that you all provided. Uh, in our example, we had a lot of birthdays in February and a lot of birthdays in June, uh, followed by May and December. Uh, some months we didn't have any birthdays in our class of 20 people. Um, and so Jake and Lauren share the same birthday in the month of May. Uh, and so kind of a, an interesting way to look at the data of birthdays across the year. And so to find out that question, we can quantify the probability of two people sharing the same birthday in a room of n number of people. And so what we find is that if we increasingly increase the number of people in a room, we have a near certain chance of two people sharing the same birthday. And now where we break even or where there's a 50% chance that two people share the same birthday is when we have 23 people in a room. And so we might expect if we were betting people, uh, we might uh, not bet on two people sharing the same birthday if there were less than 23 people, but we might bet on it if there were more than 23 people. Now, in our case of 20 students, uh, we have a less than half chance of having the same, having two people sharing the same birthday uh, around 45%. Um, and so it's interesting to compare that to uh, this curve. And so this is one of the cool things about probability. This amazes people when they hear it because they think, well, there are so many different birthdays, 365 possibilities. Shouldn't it be pretty rare that two people share the same birthday? That makes sense, but it also means that there's a lot of pairs of birthdays when you increase the number of people in the room. And so it's not the days that matter, it's the pairs that matter when it comes to this question and probability.